this uh, William Goodness. Uh, I'll call you Bill. Is that okay? right, Bill's fine. And uh, Bill has been the most recently uh, the Wood County Board Chairman, and uh, through a really uh, unfortunate situation because Bill and Jeff Conrad, uh, who he had to run against, uh, have been uh, excellent members of the county board. But uh, because uh, uh, Jeff won that election, Bill uh, is no longer on the county board, and we're going to reminisce a little bit about uh, uh, the Wood County Board uh, as he saw it during the time that he was serving on the board. Well, let's talk now, first of all, about uh, your history. All right. I was been raised here in Wood County. Uh, I went, attended school in Nakusa, and then I moved up to the Rapids and graduated from Lincoln. Spent four years in the Navy during World War II. Uh, attended University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, Madison Business College, where I specialized in some special governmental courses. Uh, graduated with a Master of Accounts degree in Business Administration. Uh, I spent one year with the Department of Audit, Municipal Division for the State of Wisconsin. Four years as Wood County Assistant Auditor and then 34 years with uh, Gross Common Carrier as their internal accountant and purchasing agent. And retired and kept my own accounting and tax business that I've had since 1955. Now, do you uh, operate uh, your uh, your business out of out of your home? Or? Yes, I do. All right. Yeah. And you, do you mostly do that during the tax season? Mostly tax season. I have a few yeah. accounts that I do on a quarterly basis, and and whenever everybody wants me, I do a little auditing on the side, but uh, mostly out of my home, just part time. Mm -hmm. In 2002, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, you and uh, Jeff Conrad uh, had to run against each other, and you both were incumbents on the on the board, and that was due to some uh, uh, redrawing of boundaries as a result of the census, which takes place every 10 years. So when you came in 10 years ago, you had probably had some similar situations where there were boundaries redrawn. The boundaries at that time did not change as much as what they did this time. They changed very drastically this time. Why was there a drastic change this time? Why? Yeah. I, I don't know why, except that the, the government sets it all up in uh, population blocks. And when they had to redo all of the blocks, this is the way it all changed. Mm -hmm. So why it was such a big drastic change, I don't know. Before, I was on District 31, which ran east and west. Now, my district would run north and south. So I lost about 90% of my district, and Jeff retained about 90% of his Jeff district, which made, like, I was running against an incumbent. So, yeah. Uh, now, Jeff, uh, most of the, that new district that you, the two of you ran in wa was formerly uh, the uh, district that Jeff was representing. Yes, yes. And uh, only, what, maybe six blocks on one side from your district was moved over into that district. Right. And that's unfortunately where you that, lived. That's right, right. So you became part of the, the right. new district, and, and that's that's how that came about. Now, there was another candidate, too, and there was uh, a primary as a result. There was actually four of them to begin with, and that was Brad Cronstead, uh, Bernice Weiland, Jeff Conrad, and myself. So, And we all lived, like myself, Bernice, and Brad, lived right on the edge of the district. And so, yeah, so the, the three uh, were moved into what was Jeff's district. Right. And uh, uh, that caused uh, a situation that uh, happened all over the city of Wisconsin Rapids uh, and uh, because of the redrawing of boundaries. Right. Yeah. There was other c contests also. There was uh, one up in Marshfield. There was, um, well, the Hewitt and Marshfield area. And then there was south of us here, Dub and, and uh, Goose had to run against each other. So we lost actually a lot of years of good people. Uh, Bernice had been on for, I think, for four or six years, myself for 10 years. Guth had been on for, I think, 15 or 16 years. So you lost a lot of good people that had a lot of knowledge. Now, there were uh, a number of areas where this situation happened. It wasn't just in Wisconsin Rapids, but you happen to be a, a representative on the Wood County Board from the Wisconsin Rapids area. And it was like uh, in the north uh, 
eastern part of the city. When you uh, uh, became a member of the county board, uh, uh, was there uh, 39 members then too? 38. 38. There's still 38. I'm sorry, 38. Right. And uh, I guess I, I have that confused with the 19 that the <laughs> right. Wisconsin Rapids Board uh, the Council used to have until um, a referendum was passed not too long ago, uh, which created a lot more confusion in the city this election because uh, a lot of the aldermanic districts were also combined to eventually reduce uh, the number of, of aldermen seated on the city council in Wisconsin Rapids from 19 down to 8. Right. Uh, so that that created even more uh, um, confusion for some voters and more choices that had to be made in order to um, uh, eliminate some candidates. And uh, I've said it before that unfortunately in every election somebody has to lose, and this time a lot of people had to lose. Right, right. Uh, we'll talk more with uh, Bill Goodness uh, in just a couple of moments here on The Gary Morgan Show. It's a real pleasure to be doing a, a, a show for you on this channel. Uh, we call it the Gary Morgan Show. It's um, a program that is kind of like I did uh, on radio for a lot of years. I did this kind of thing on radio uh, on stations around Wisconsin, and I interviewed personalities in the news and, uh, and also governors, other politicians, agency heads, uh, organization representatives, authors, television producers, and sometimes people like you with interesting stories to tell, to share with everybody else. Now, my aim then was to bring listeners some information in an entertaining way. And now I'm doing that kind of thing on this channel. I'm doing the same thing with guests for you on television. But on the TV version, you'll not only be able to hear the conversations, you'll be able to see the people the conversations are taking place between. And sound and moving pictures is a great concept. I, I hope that you'll be there. Thank you. We're talking again with uh, William Goodness, who has been the county board chairman up until uh, the uh, 2002 election. And uh, Bill, as uh, you heard earlier, uh, served on the uh, Wood County Board for 10 years. Uh, back, well, that would be in the year... 1992. 92. I came on. Yeah, that seems so long ago. <laughs> if you think about it, and then at, at, at other times it seems uh, such a short time because, I don't know if it's true with you, but for me, the years seem to be going by faster the older I get. That's the way it goes. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, being involved with the county board, I would imagine that uh, for you the, the uh, years went by even faster than for some people because as a county board chairman, there are a lot of things that you have to do uh, then may, some people may not uh, be aware of. What are the duties of the, the Wood County Board Chairman? Well, as you take office with, with the Board Chairman, uh, you have to see that all your members are placed on appropriate committees. Uh, so you you set up all the committees, point them on the committees. You have to pick out the chairman for that committee. Uh, you have to see that the whole, all the committees meet on a regular basis. They take care of their their duties as such. Uh, run, run the county board meeting, uh, answer a, an awful lot of letters that come in from the state and from other counties. Uh, you attend a lot more meetings than what you would if you were just on the county board. Uh, I, I attended different meetings with the state and other counties. and So it's actually the county board chairman is actually the administrative co coordinator for the county. He's the administrative head of the county. Yes. Now, did uh, did you find that it was pretty much a full-time job? It's getting to be that way. It's uh, because the pay is not for a full-time job. Pay is not for the full-time. Yeah. No, we have we have discussed having a full-time administrator for the county, and that's been going on now for about the last four or five years that we've discussed it. Uh, it has not come to that point yet, but I'm sure that in the very near future we will have an administrator for the county. Now, um, I covered the uh, Wood County Board meetings for uh, 10 years, and um, it seems to me that um, taxpayers might not like to hear this, but, but I, I believe that uh, all of the members of the Wood County Board are underpaid for the amount of hours that they have to put in. 
if they're doing their job properly, <laughs> and most of them are. Yes. Uh, you get paid $40 for a, anything up to four hours. Uh, it's $50 for anything over four hours, and they receive a, beyond and above that, they receive a hundred month, hundred dollars a month salary uh, if they attend the meetings. Uh, so you're looking at not an awful lot of money for 10 meetings. Some meetings, I'll grant you, are maybe an hour, hour and a half. Other meetings, uh, you get on the finance and budget, during the budget times in the fall, we meet from 9 in the morning until maybe 4 o'clock in the afternoon without any break. Now, on top of that, there are a lot of hours of research that aren't meeting hours, uh, so the combined uh, number of hours that uh, a county board uh, a supervisor can spend on the job uh, probably doubles. Yes. Now, uh, we get the Friday before the regular board meeting, uh, we get the packet, as we refer to it, which is all of the minutes of the all the committees from yeah, the whole which month before. Yeah, gets to be pretty thick. Yes. And uh, you'll spend anywhere from two to three, maybe even four hours, reading through that and digesting it. And maybe if you've got questions, you call in the heads of departments to get your questions answered, rather than waiting for board time to take up everybody else's time. So, yes, it's a lot of research and a lot of talking. And and with other supervisors also, getting them on the phone, talking over things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And uh, I would imagine that uh, some of the supervisors go a little bit further and not just uh, talk to uh, other uh, committee members, but to uh, some of the department heads uh, to get uh, clarification about what some of the items are that are going to coming up and, uh, um, and perhaps some advice uh, from uh, some department heads and others uh, within the county uh, and uh, and uh, their constituents as well. Right. Now, you you uh, answering the phone, the people are calling you for come up in the paper ahead that what's going to be on the agenda. Uh, they'll call you and say they're for or against it, or maybe they'll have suggestions. So you have to carry that back to the board and present it. Mm. So. Now, one of the things that uh, we want to talk about, uh, in addition to what we have talked about already, is uh, uh, what is your impression of some of the things that have been going on with the uh, Wood County Board, uh, some of the issues that uh, have been discussed and uh, acted on? And first, we'll, we'll talk about the, the 10 years that you served as a county board uh, representative. Uh, from the uh, Wisconsin Rapids area, uh, and uh, then we'll get into uh, exactly uh, what kind of activities had to go on uh, as a, a county board chairman during your uh, term of uh, serving in that position, and how a, a county board chairman gets to be county board chairman. Uh, those are some of the things that we'll be covering uh, on the show. Uh, the first thing that we'll talk about uh, is... Um, but what do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about the, the 10 years that you served and some of the, the important issues that came up? Well, that's probably some of it. The issues that have come up over the past, we've had, and it's still going on right now, and that's your holding tank issue. Uh, that's still news, even though it's been settled and taken care of. Uh, new group coming in, there's been some uh, lawsuits filed. Uh, we have a group that's coming on the board now that's uh, are going to be bringing that up again. And uh, that's something that might be continuing for, for quite a while. Now, how many new members are there on the board now? I believe that there was um, 11 this time. Mm -hmm. that's, that's quite a turnover uh, during what election, at least in the 10 years I was covering the county board. Well, when I took over as chairman, Two years ago, we had 13 new ones. So that was quite a turnover also. Yeah, that was two years ago. Two years ago. Okay, right. that, that's about when I stopped covering the county board. Right. And it, it becomes quite a job for the chairman to appoint uh, 13 new members to committees that they've never served on before. And when you've lost people who've been on there for years and know what's going on and have to put them on these committees, it's quite difficult. Well, why don't you go into a little bit of uh, the orientation uh, uh, that uh, a new members have to, uh, uh, in order to get up to speed, what, you know, the, how much time is spent in getting uh, new members up to speed? Well, that is all depend on what the, 
what the new member wants to do. Uh, we do have, well, we did have a week ago, an ori one afternoon for an orientation session. Uh, I spoke to him. The first vice chairman spoke to him. Uh, we had the county clerk and we had the uh, human resource director there and uh, explaining to them how to do different things. But uh, they, there's also a program going to be put on by, this, by the university extension for new supervisors. And there they go through in more detail of what the background is of is what a supervisor does. But mostly it's up to the individual to be, get on gear themselves. Now there is a, uh, uh, a complete history that is kept of actions that are taken by the county board and these are all compiled and uh, are available for any new board member if they want to read back and see what some of the history is of some of the subjects and I would mention that includes uh, the minutes of, of some of the meetings and what was discussed during these meetings. Right. Now, the county clerk has the, the books. They publish a whole year at a time of all the county board minutes which includes all the committee minutes and everything else. And all the uh, resolutions. The resolutions, the right. And they keep those in file, so anyone that wants to go in there, that's all public record. And so they can go in there and ask for their, the minutes of whatever year they want. One of the things that I uh, um, enjoyed was that uh, occasionally uh, some of the department heads were brought into discussions that were on the county board floor. Uh, if, and I, my impression was that if a, a county supervisor uh, wanted them to present something, they had to be introduced by a county supervisor before they could have a say. And usually it was just uh, uh, as background information. And I don't recall too often that uh, any of the supervisors during the discussion periods, uh, the question and answer periods from the department heads, uh, I don't recall too often if they, there was any questions aimed at the department heads for um, advice on how to vote on a resolution. No, usually that's a no-no, to ask somebody how they should vote. You get the facts, somebody has a question, you want it to explain a little bit fuller, more fully, so you go through and you have it explained, and then it is up to the supervisor to do his voting. Anytime a department head would get up, if they ever would, I'm sure that the chairman should correct him right there that you are not to advise the supervisors of how to vote. And that brings up another subject, and that is... Um, uh, the rules of order in, in uh, meetings and as a county board uh, uh, chairman you were uh, actively in, uh, involved in, in determining which rules should go into effect while discussions were going on and we'll talk more about that with uh, William Goodness uh, as uh, the program goes on and hope that you stay right where you are. Hi this is Gary Morgan we're doing a program on this station called The Gary Morgan Show. I hope that you'll be right out there on the other side of this television screen and um, watching as we have conversations with senators, assembly representatives, organization leaders, entertainers, news figures, and others who have some unique insights, details you need to know, or just some really great stories to share with you. We'll be bringing it to you for your information and also for your enjoyment because we'll do our very best to not only be informative, but more than that, we hope to occasionally bring a smile to your face as well. It'll be right here on The Gary Morgan Show. Why don't you join us on this channel? It's The Gary Morgan Show, and I'm looking forward to seeing you the next time. And I hope that you are too. Please tune us in on this channel. We have with us William Goodness, who's chairman of the Wood County Board uh, from uh, uh, up until 2002, and, he's, and the Wood County Board uh, uh, supervisors are, are elected for two-year periods, and the county board chairman serves for two years. Bill, I guess there's one thing that should be mentioned, first of all, before we get into uh, what a county board uh, supervisor does to preside over the meetings. Um, and that is that um, each of the county supervisors uh, not only is elected to represent the area that they uh, ran in, but also has the responsibility to represent the entire county because you act on things 
uh, by, uh, through your voting that affects everybody in Wood County. That's very true, and that's why you cannot be looking down one little alley. You have to look for the whole county and the good for all of the citizens of Wood County. People who, if they just look at their own district, vote only for their own district, are not doing the justice, doing their job right as a, as a supervisor. You have to look at the whole picture and do whatever has to be done. That's kind of kind of like uh, when people are elected uh, to the uh, federal offices, uh, congressmen. Uh, for example, a congressman doesn't just represent the congressional district he was represented from, but he's also representing uh, uh, voting on issues that affect everybody throughout the United States. Right. And that's pretty much uh, what we're talking about here uh, at the county supervisor level um, because it, everything that's voted on affects everybody in the county. That's right. Um, and that's, that's true, I guess, to a lesser extent in, in city uh, politics. Uh, although I think there, for some aldermen, for example, there is a tendency to think about just representing what's best for their district, uh, super, uh, their aldermanic district. But on a county level, I don't know, it, it just affects a heck of a lot more people. It not only affects the, the county, it also affects the state level also because whatever you do in Wood County might have a bearing on one of the other counties and it may have a snowball effect and go all the way out through the whole state. So you're not looks looking at a district or the county, you're looking at the whole state. One of the things that uh, we promised people that we would talk about uh, is the exactly what it is that a uh, Wood County Board Chairman does uh, to preside over the meetings uh, because that's that's one of the major things that people see anyway and, and hear about is uh, what happens at the meetings. Although there's a lot of things that happen at uh, committee meetings and things like that uh, as well, the, the, the thing that affects most people is what uh, how the voting takes place and the discussion that uh, takes place on the floor. and. Um, I'm sure that everybody knows that there are some rules and regulations that uh, you as the presiding officer has to uh, uh, consider and uh, act on uh, when some of the discussion does take place. Uh, what do you do to uh, uh, determine how long somebody speaks? There are some bylaws involving that probably. We have, uh, we are under what they call the Roberts Rules of Order. We, go, we abide by those. We also have our own county board rules uh, and if it's not covered by Robert's rules it's also it's covered by the county rules uh, you have to go by those rules you cannot speak on the same issue twice in a row unless somebody else is spoken and then you, you try to generate it so that everybody gets a chance to speak if they want to and then if they're through then uh, you can go back and have that person speak again if he likes to. You have to see that they are addressing all of their remarks to the chair, not have any arguments back and forth or discussions back and forth. One supervisor cannot ask another supervisor a question. He has to ask it through the chair. And so you try to keep it going that way. And uh, if a person gets to be too long-winded, uh, then you have to stop them somehow. Um, how, how many times can uh, uh, one of the uh, supervisors talk on that same issue? There is there no, limit? no set amount that they, can, that they have to stop at any time. Uh, and there's no set length of uh, time that they no, can no. have the microphone? No, it's up, that's up to the, to the chairman to cut them back, to say you, you've had enough time. Now, as soon as somebody is recognized by the chair to speak, then they have the floor until they wish to give it up? Right. Right. So there could be a filibuster? Well, that is up to the chair. Uh, you, can, you can cut them off, and uh, if somebody, you just have to cut them off. If they get to be too long-winded or if they start getting out of, normally you, if you find somebody that wants to speak, they start getting off the subject. And as soon as they get off the subject, you're out of order. Thanks a lot, Bill. Appreciate okay. it.